Good evening on this Sunday night from Newtown, Connecticut, and we are here tonight in front of the Newtown High School where an entire community is coming together. The families of the victims, the survivors too, and they are gathering here tonight to hear from President Obama, who is on his way to the school right now, tonight in his role as Comforter-in-Chief, as a father himself, helping to heal a nation in mourning. Across town, outside the elementary school, a live picture, a memorial that is growing tonight and around the country much the same. Outside Philadelphia, a vigil for the victims. In Washington, D.C., remembering them with song, holding candles against the night. At a church in Detroit, keeping those children, those teachers in their prayers. And on television today, NFL players like the teams right at the New Orleans Superdome offering a moment of silence. And this evening, a new image of the gunman, Adam Lanza, smiling in his sixth grade yearbook picture years before he would take the lives of the 12 little girls here, the eight little boys, the six women who taught and guided them. Our entire ABC News team is on the ground here tonight, and we begin with the portraits of the lives lost, the lives that will be remembered right inside this high school behind me tonight. On this Sunday, prayers from an entire nation for this small New England community where winding roads and homes wrapped in wreaths lead the way to a town overcome with grief. God bless Sandy Hook and the simplest of messages, give your loved ones a hug. Outside church, parents crying in each other's arms. Police officers arriving, their patrol cars filled with teddy bears. The officers themselves breaking down in front of a growing vigil. And this evening, a song from one of the little girls who did not survive. Anna Marquez Green was just six. Her father, a jazz musician, sitting here beside her brother. One, two, three, ready and go. Her brother was also in that school. He survived here, practicing a song for their parents. In the end, flashing her smile. We're also learning more this evening about Emily Parker, who was six. She would often carry with her markers and crayons to draw pictures for people who she thought were sad. This community so moved by her father, who bravely described his little girl and his loss. She was the type of person that could just light up a room. She, uh, she always had something kind to say about anybody. And her, her, her love and the strength that she gave us and the example that she showed to us is remarkable. She is an incredible person. And I'm so blessed to be her dad. And Emily's father offered a message for the gunman's family, too. It's a horrific tragedy, and we want everybody to know that our hearts and our prayers go out to them. This includes the family of the shooter. I can't imagine how hard this experience must be for you. And I want you to know that our family and our love and our support goes out to you as well. He spoke of the parents of the other 19 children. Olivia Engel was just learning the rosary and would lead her family in grace every night before dinner. Jesse Lewis was learning to ride horseback and was looking forward to his father coming to school on Friday to watch him make a gingerbread house. Catherine Hubbard had her beautiful red hair. Her parents in a statement, we are greatly saddened by the loss of our beautiful daughter, Catherine Violet. We ask that you continue to pray for us and the other families who have experienced loss in this tragedy. Grace McDonald, whose grandmother said Grace loved playing dress-up, loved wearing grandma's jewelry. And the principal, Don Hoxsprung, who we told you last night, is believed to have turned on the PA during the chaos to send a warning to other teachers. Now it's believed she headed straight toward the gunman, toward the sound of gunfire, to save the students. School psychologist Mary Sherlock, right there with her. The teacher's aides, Anne-Marie Murphy and Rachel Devino, and teacher Lauren Rousseau, whose father said she died with her little kids. Victoria Soto, whose family says when her body was found, it was clear she was trying to shield her first grade students. And there's kids now that will be able to say that they're here today because she sacrificed her life so they could live another day. And tonight for the parents with children who did survive, the mothers and fathers in town holding their hands, hugging them, a different kind of pain. Marianne Brown with three children of her own. I feel selfish for being thankful that I didn't lose any children. I drive by the kids waiting for the school buses and I don't know who's going to be waiting. 